Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to talk about Aubercy. This is the Aubercy Edward, which is a very, very nice Blake stitched shoe. Um, this is uh, entry level for Aubercy. Uh, runs around a thousand um, euros. It is uh, um, has a blind stitch for the Blake. Very nicely executed. Uh, you'd think by the color of the sole that this might be made by Enzo Benafa. It is made in Italy. Uh, Aubercy has a bespoke factory in France, but they uh, do bring in their um, ready-to-wear lines from Italy. Uh, they also have the option to go with a hand-welted Goodyear welted, which uh, is hand-welted, right? Um, but that is uh, 350 euros more. And I really wanted to, uh, you know, test out my sizing here, make sure that I understand their last and uh, get a good feel for it. Um, it is um, lasted well, but symmetrical. It's, so it doesn't have a big asymmetrical piece um, like you see on some of the higher end shoes and the same price point. Um, it did not come with toe plates. Um, so that may be something that I add to it. Um, the lining material uh, feels like Crockett and Jones. If you've watched my videos, I thought Crockett and Jones had the best linings of any shoe out there. Uh, but this is very good. The suede is a, you know, reverse Janus type suede. Um, it's very, very short, but it is enough of a pile so you can see it. And it is very luxurious. So a very, very good high quality suede, um, you know, that you can feel. Uh, it is also a very interesting color. It's almost granite you know it's it's a gray but there's a lot of brown and uh if you're not careful when you actually edit the photos with this it can come across purple which i thought is uh interesting by itself um so it's a uh it's just an interesting shoe um and you know i bought it because i really wanted to understand obviously obviously is one of those french brands it's always been a bit of an enigma to me um, you know, any any brand that charges a thousand to two thousand dollars for their shoes, uh, you know, you really wonder what is so great about it. And really, you know, I look at this last and uh, how they bring that together. I, I look at these unique details like this medallion. They have a little uh, puncture there at the heel, which is very nice look at how this is carved to the waist okay this is not a fiddleback waist but that is definitely carved thin and then thick right a lot of really small details like this that i just the more i look at these shoes the more i see right this could be a top lifted piece of leather but instead it's just broke cut into the main piece the layering is very nice you know, now if I look at, you know, the skiving, it's, uh, <laughs> it is not skived super thin. So, you know, not like a St. Crispin's or an Acme, um, uh, which are more expensive, right? These are probably $1,300 and sometimes those will be 15 or 1700. But, um, you know, for this price point or around this price point, I would expect usually to see the skiving a little bit cleaner. Um, I would say the uh, clicking, like you see that little seam right there? That's the kind of thing I wouldn't expect to see at this price point, but you do. But overall, the shape of the shoe and the carving and, oh, look, there's one of those prints on the other side of the shoe as well. Um, they have a lot of interesting, um, unique details, but is this really a $1,300 shoe or is this really an $800 shoe, um, that's really, really hard to tell, right? Uh, now, I, I did elect to buy um, trees as well. And they are here. Now, I did get a little bit of a break on the pricing that I'm, I'm quoting here, and I think that's because I didn't have to pay that. Um, now, I had to pay import duties here, so, you know, there is a, a difference there. But... Um, uh, the trees are really cool. I mean, look at that. But I did pay for the trees. I think they were 60 euros. So, and I mean, look at that. That is a very cool carved hat tree. Much more than, than some that, that start to do this but don't quite go as far. So, 
Um, now, from a sizing perspective, um, normally I wear a 44 in European sizes. They told me to go with 45, mostly because of the way the toe is. And this part of the toe is very, very shallow. And uh, they were right. Um, I have just about the perfect instep height. And here it feels tight, but not um, oppressively tight, um, which, is, uh, which is great when I'm wearing it. So that is the Aubercy Edward. Uh, definitely a brand to watch. Um, I have not decided whether or not I'm going to continue on my Aubercy journey. Um, probably will, uh, because it is intriguing to see um, how, it's, uh, how it's going to be different when I go with a, a hand welted variety. Um, to see whether or not like the hand lasting and I start seeing a little bit more asymmetry um, and when I go up the line whether or not it's uh, it's worth it but you can get a lot of uh, hand welted shoe out there for for 12 to 1500 bucks and so that's a, a decision that I've really got to start thinking about uh, because um, you know as I narrow the field in my journey um, you know I, I want to make sure that I stay focused on the on the brands that really have the best value um, for the money at the high end, and that is a, uh, a question that I that I see here. Now, uh, if I compare this to like an Edward Green, where it's a very similar price point, but they are Goodyear welted, um, but Machine Goodyear welted, um, you know, is that substantially different than Blake? And are these details such that it, uh, you know, brings those home and brings it more in line with a, a brand that I would want to keep? And I am continually intrigued. Right, so uh, you can probably tell from the just way I'm thinking about it, I'm not ready to say no. So, this is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and that is my thoughts for now. Let me know yours in the comments. Thanks.